Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to Intermediate C++ Tutorial 19. Today, I'm going to teach you about dynamic casting. I'm going to summarize actually all the C++ casts that are available. And I'm also going to teach you a little bit about RTTI and some other techniques for type discovery. Now, in the previous video, I introduced the, the big idea of polymorphism, the idea that we can have some container. It has pointer to base type, and it is pointing to a bunch of objects of different dynamic types. And we can just call some dynamic, uh, some virtual function on all of those, and we will get the appropriate behavior for each of those dynamic types. We don't need to know what actual types are in that container. We just call the function, and the right thing happens. It's beautiful. It's elegant and it's simple. But sometimes you might actually need to find out what those base pointers are actually pointing to. So let's see how you do that. So we're back in the meme fighter code here and I've added another dude, a meme cat class. Now we got three types of fighters. Now what I want to do is I want to make the meme stoner say something different um, when he does a special move depending on the type of his opponent. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use dynamic cast to try to figure out what that uh, what his opponent is. So we've got a reference to a meme fighter. We want to determine whether that is an actually a reference to a meme frog, stoner, or meme cat. So what we're going to do is if we get the uh, the roll, we're going to try to dynamic cast. Now the way dynamic cast works, uh, we can use it on pointers and references. Let's start with pointers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to try for meme frog first. So meme frog pointer to p frog. And you might have not seen this before, but you can actually initialize a local variable block local inside the if statement like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go is equal to dynamic cast to meme frog pointer. And we're going to take the address of other dynamic cast will try to cast from one type in a in inheritance hierarchy to another type. And it actually can use information built into the type to determine whether that cast is valid. So it's going to try to cast a meme frog from meme fighter. Now, what if the thing pointed to uh, by other? What if the thing referenced is not a meme frog? What if it's a meme cat? Well, then this dynamic cast will determine that, and it'll return null pointer. And that's why this if is here, because this if will be evaluated to false if this evaluates to null pointer. So here, we will only execute the stuff inside this block if the cast was successful. Otherwise, we just skip it. So if it's a meme frog, we want to output a frog-related message. So there's our message, and then we'll do the same thing for the other two types. Now, when you do that, it looks like this. We're just using dynamic cast here to check to see if the, uh, the meme fighter reference is actually a meme stoner or a meme cat. Uh, we get this pointer, we're not actually using it, but we could use it if we wanted to. Like if uh, meme stoner, if it extended uh, meme fighter and it added a few non-virtual functions, once we have this pointer to the derived type, we could call those non-virtual functions that would not normally be available to us. So that's one way you could do that, but we're not going to do that here. Uh, now if you build this, you're going to have a problem. And the problem is meme cat is undeclared identifier. So yeah, meme cat comes down here. We don't know about it yet when we're compiling. We could do some forward declaration stuff, uh, but to make life simple, I'm just going to put the meme stoner at the end here. Now it is aware of all the different types. And if we run this, we see that when has cheesebugger faces off against scumbag Steve, scumbag Steve is going to say, hey kitty bro, can I pet you? So it's working as intended here. We can detect the dynamic type based on some reference to the base class. Now one thing you may be wondering is why did you bother to use pointers here at all, Chili? Why don't you just cast to a reference and then you don't have to go to pointers? Well, let's see what happens when we turn these pointers into reference casts. So here I try to do a dynamic cast to a meme frog reference. When I run that, is we're gonna get an unhandled exception bad cast. So if we break here, yeah, we see that this cast is bad. So when it tries to cast here and it's anything other than an actual meme frog being referenced, it's gonna throw an exception. So we often don't want that to happen. So what we do instead is we use dynamic cast for pointer that will return a null pointer if the cast was invalid and then we can check for that and act accordingly. So there you go, you can use this, you can find the dynamic type of some pointer or reference 
at runtime. Now, this isn't a particularly fast operation. Uh, it takes a while for the runtime to figure out what the object actually is. Uh, but it's not something you should really worry about unless you're going to be calling this like, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of times per frame. Then you might start to worry about that shit. But in general, uh, if you really need to find out the dynamic type at runtime, you can just use dynamic cast to check. Uh, now, one thing that is important to note here is this only works for types that have at least one virtual function. Because think about the dynamic cast, it needs some kind of information to figure out what this thing actually is. And normal classes, they don't contain any information like that. They're just the data. Uh, but classes that inherit from something with a virtual function, remember what I told you, they, it needs some way of dispatching those virtual uh, function calls. And that data, that little extra data that it stores, is used by dynamic cast to figure out what the object actually is. So no virtual functions, no dynamic cast for you. So dynamic cast is a little expensive, but it can figure out what we're dealing with. What if we already know what we are dealing with? What if we know that this thing is pointing to, for example, a meme frog? Then we don't need to use dynamic cast, we can use static cast. Uh, so I've added a non-virtual function to meme frog called it foo. And what we're going to do is we are going to use static cast to access that. So we know that the first element of this vector is a meme frog. So what we can do, we can do a static cast to meme frog pointer, uh, element zero of T1. And then on that, we can call the foo function. And this will work the same as dynamic cast, only it'll be a lot faster. So if you are sure, for whatever reason, that uh, the reference or the pointer that you have is pointing to a certain dynamic type, you can just use static cast instead of using dynamic cast, and that will save you a lot of uh, runtime performance. All right, so static cast can be used to convert uh, different types, like converting int to float, but it can also be used to cast around in an inheritance hierarchy. All right, now there's one last type of C++ style cast that I want to introduce you guys to. It's called const cast. I don't use it very often, but I have found one good use for it. So what it does basically is it allows you to remove the const from a reference or a pointer. And this might sound incredibly, you know, dangerous and bad. I mean, if it's const, it's const for a reason, and it's expected not to change, and removing that can cause a lot of problems. But one good use I've found for it is you often get the situation where you've got some member function that allows you to access something inside of an array, right? So you would return a reference to the element, you would pass it an index into the array or some coordinates, and it would get you a reference. And you could use that reference to read or write to that element in the array. If you have a const reference to the object that you want to access the array of, uh, then you also want to have a const overload for that function that will return a const reference and will only allow you to read the element. So you'd have to implement this function twice, the same lookup code only once for the uh, non-const version and once for the const version. Now what I've found that I can do here is I can create a const version of the function. That means that my this pointer is going to be const, right? I'm not allowed to modify anything in the self object. But what I can do is I can cast that to non-const and then call the at here. So now I have this function calling this function. I don't implement the same logic in two different places. The logic is implemented here and it is only called from here. And uh, this is fine because I'm returning a const reference. So nothing will ever be modified even though I'm erasing the const from the this pointer. And that's just one way that you can use const cast here in a uh, productive manner. All right, so now that we have all the different types of casts under our belt, let's just quickly review them. We got the static cast. We can use it to convert types, like converting into float. We can also cast pointers and references within an inheritance hierarchy, but it does not perform any checking. It just does the cast and assumes that it is valid. Dynamic cast, on the other hand, casts pointers and references, but it does a dynamic check to make sure that the cast is valid. Now, this is going to require that the types have at least one virtual function, 
and if the check fails, it will return null pointer for a pointer cast, but it'll throw an exception for a reference cast. Now, reinterpret cast, I've talked about this guy a little bit in the pointer video, but it allows you to re -point, reinterpret a pointer or a reference as pointing to some completely different type. It just pretends like that pointer is now pointing to another type and deals with it uh, accordingly. There's no check and there's no limit. It doesn't have to be in the same hierarchy. It can just be reinterpret anything to anything else. Uh, and you can do this, but it is really only safe for reinterpreting things to car pointer. Everything else is bad. The other thing you can do besides reinterpreting pointers to point to other types is you can reinterpret a pointer as an integral value of its address. So you can take the address and convert it basically just into an integer value, or you can convert from an integer value into an address. Again, this can be very dangerous. We don't usually do that. And the last one is the const cast, removes the constness of a pointer or a reference. Again, I have not found much use for this one, but I have found at least one good use case. So those are the C++ style casts. Now you have the C style casts, the one that you do with the, uh, the round braces like this, the parentheses, and they can do everything, all of these things at once. Uh, even if you don't mean to do them, and that is why the C++ style casts are superior. Take this situation, you have a pointer, a const pointer to a base type, you want to re you want to statically cast it up the inheritance hierarchy, so you cast it to the derived type with uh, C style cast, but oops, you also cast away the constness by accident here, because you didn't type const into here, so it'll just silently cast away the constantness here, and then if you modify that uh, object by accident somewhere down the road, you're going to have a problem because you're going to be assuming that that object could not be modified when it actually could be because you used a C style cast here. So you got to be wary about that. And this is why this, this is the origin of my personal style, where I will only use C style casts for doing simple casts of value, casting from int to float, stuff like that. If I am doing any kind of pointer or reference bullshit uh, or const bullshit, it, I use the C++ style, and that prevents this uh, situation here of inadvertently casting away constness, because uh, that's not an issue for just simple value conversions. But it also avoids me having to type out static cast, angle braces, type name, round parentheses thing every time I want to frickin' cast an int to a float. Chili, Chili don't play that. So I use C style cast for just standard uh, conversions between type, and I use the C style for everything else. All right, now let's take a look at a slightly different situation here. Let's say we want to make a free function uh, called our same type that checks to see if two meme fighters have the same dynamic type. So the way you would do this with dynamic cast is first you'd have a chain of uh, if else and you would check to see what the type of frog one or the type of fighter one is. And then once you've determined the type of fighter one, you're going to check to see if F2 has the same type. Uh, so you've got a whole bunch of um, dynamic casts here in a chain, if else is, doesn't look too great. Let me show you a neat little alternative. So we're going to go up to the includes, we're going to include type info. And type info is going to, including this, will enable something called RTTI, run type, runtime type information. And then we can use a little operator called type ID. And we can get the type ID of any dynamic type here. So I'll type F1 here. Uh, and I want to check to see if the type ID of F1 is equal to the type ID of F2. And there you go. That's all you need to check to see if they're the same if you're using RTTI. And I'm sure you'll agree that's a hell of a lot simpler than what we had before. So here you can see we're comparing the, uh, the types of these two guys, and then here we're comparing the types of these two guys. So we should get true, false, and we get that here, true, false. So we can use type ID like this to compare the dynamic types of two objects. If the object you pass it doesn't have a virtual function, it's just going to give you the static type. And you can also use type ID on a type name, and that will get you the type so you can compare it with the type ID of something else. So if we wanted to rewrite these guys with type ID, it would look like this. 
So you can see here, it's a little shorter, it's a little nicer. If you're using dynamic cast just to check to see the, the dynamic type of an object, but you're not actually using the pointer afterwards that you casted, maybe you could just use type ID instead. It's a little more readable. Now the type ID operator actually returns an object of type type info. So you can use this, again, you can compare the, the two type infos. Uh, there are some other things in here that are very useful when you want to use these objects with things like maps, but we won't get into that today. But one other thing you can do is you can get the name of the type. So if I do the type ID of uh, this object right here, then I can go dot name and uh, I can get the name of that guy, Stid and L. So that can be useful as a kind of reflection to get information about the dynamic, the names of the dynamic types in your program for debugging purposes, maybe. So here it says class meme stoner. So that's what you get out when you do type ID dot name on this guy here. So that's the basics of runtime type information. I don't use it a lot. Um, you can't, unfortunately, you can't use this type info stuff in, in a switch or anything. But what you can do is you can use it inside of a map or an unordered map, uh, and that can give you a kind of switch-like functionality, and maybe I'll go into that a little bit in a future video. But uh, you should just know that runtime type information, a lot of people say, you know, it's really bad, uh, they don't like it, and it does have an overhead, uh, the same as dynamic cast, it can be slow, so you shouldn't use it in, you know, super performance critical areas, but if you need it, don't be afraid to use it, it's not the end of the world. Now the main thing that I want you guys to take away from this is I've shown you, yeah, you can discover the underlying type of some reference or pointer. You can discover its dynamic type and you can act on that. But it's much more elegant to use dynamic dispatch to do that for you instead of having these long chains of ifs to figure out what you're dealing with. It's much better to just have a virtual function special move and then you can just call it. Like look at this, do specials. Imagine this without the virtual function call. This special move here, we'd have to replace this with a big long chain of ifs, or you'd have to replace it with a switch, and then you'd have to put an enumeration into your meme fighters, and you would have to get the value of that enumeration, and then switch on it, and then do a different action depending on the result of that switch. It's not elegant, it's not, it's not good at all. I would much rather prefer having a virtual function. All I gotta do is call the virtual function and it's done. It dispatches to the correct implementation and I'm happy. And if I wanna add new different types to this hierarchy with different uh, special moves, I can add them. I don't have to do any other bullshit. Just override the virtual function and it's done. So the moral of this story is always prefer virtual functions and try to do it with virtual functions first. If you can't find a good way, then yeah, you might need to do a dynamic cast or you might need to compare type IDs. But oftentimes, especially with uh, beginners, with learners, they use this as a crutch and they never learn how to properly use virtual functions. And that's why I've uh, shown you this last, because I want you first to use virtual functions to their full effect and then only as a last resort, try to discover the underlying type and act on that. And that's where I'm going to leave things off for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++.